Welcome back. We are doing our movie reviews. We have a few of them. And I think Chuck and I want to jump on here first before someone else does. And Chatty Cathy. Right there you now. go. That way you can get you know a few recommendations in quickly. And then for the more long-enduring folks, you can go ahead and listen to Kevin's one-hour Long tirade. Long-enduring <laughs> folks. Exactly. And if you see us kind of you know, space out, we're just sleeping. <laughs> All right, I think I'll go first. I actually got a few of them because obviously we had some time between the last time we met so I could see a few more movies. Uh, the first one, I'm doing a little bit, I'm going over the couple of decades. The first one I'm going to do is The Car. It's a 1977 supernatural horror movie starring James Brolin. And for those of you who don't know, you younger said he's the father of Josh Brolin, that's Thanos from <laughs> Marvel, and directed by Elliot Silverstein. Now, it is essentially about this mystery car that murders people in a small southwestern town in the United States. Uh, and without a doubt, definitely influenced by the movie The Duel and Death Race 2000. And uh, it's actually a very good movie because, first of all, you, you don't see the driver. Uh, the car itself, it's a 1971, very, high, very highly customized Lincoln Continental. And I told Kevin to look it up because he likes to do car models and it looks super cars. awesome it, well it is and it is super awesome uh lincoln continental mark three by the way so if you want to look that up okay and now it, it it's definitely got this concept of a, a a demons at the wheel and it's a 1970s movie so anyone could die and they had some moments there that were actually genuinely creepy because there is one where the main the female main fan, female protagonist was talking to her boyfriend on the phone and there was a picture window behind her and there was the road then you saw the the lights of the car coming it was just slowly coming 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 and then uh well you know i don't want to ruin a movie from the 70s but <laughs> not everyone gets to live in this movie uh, uh you don't thing, say <laughs> yeah one thing i liked about this is reality set in quickly for the movie itself the people accepted that this demon car existed there was not oh it's not real it's not well we'll catch them sooner or later but the police force was on the the, the task james Rowland was the acting sheriff after the original sheriff was killed it had ronnie cox on it as well uh if you don't know that that's the uh lieutenant from beverly hills cop and it was scary even without seeing the driver and when in the end when they finally were able to trap and blow up the car all you had from the smoke and the fire was this demonic vision that obviously said this was not a human thing. One thing that's interesting is Anton LaVey was a technical advisor on this movie. For those of you who don't know... The Satanic Temple, yes, that's interesting. leader of the Church of the Devil, if you will. I wonder where they got that from. Uh, it's a good movie. It's a 70s movie. They were not designed to be very deep thoughts. But uh, they did come up with a sequel. I saw it. It was absolutely horrendous. Please don't see the sequel. <laughs> uh, next, I have Apollo 18. I don't want to confuse anyone like I did with Kevin. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm like, how's the movie with Kevin? And that's not, no, it's Kevin Bacon and Tom, and Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yeah, that was Apollo 13. Right, right. Uh, Apollo 18, it's a 2011 sci-fi horror movie directed by Gonzalo <laughs> Lopez Gallego. And it's uh, found footage, and it's actually interesting because if you have this concept of government conspiracy theories, that uh, in history, the Apollo 17 was the last lunar mission to the moon. But in this case, you had three astronauts, two who were actually on the moon, one who was circling above. And unfortunately, they are dealing with... Uh, for lack of a better word, they're alien spiders, to be honest, coming out of moon oh, rocks. Cool. And they came across a cosmonaut shuttle, so the Russians did get to the moon, but the cosmonauts were killed. Uh, I I mean, I like the fact that it was very good in claustrophobia because you don't have many places to go. You're stuck inside this lunar module. Then you're in the lunar suits, but that's where the monsters can actually get you. And not to mention, they did end. Uh, in the end, it was just no one survived. I'm sorry, I'm going to ruin that right now for you. They were talking about how all the lunar rocks that they were brought back were sent all throughout the world and how NASA was scrambling to get them back because, oh, obviously that's going to be quite scary. Uh, 
And not to mention government conspiracy theories. They all knew about it, but they sent this uh, one. They, they sent them anyways. And the last one I'm going to do, and by the way, that was on Netflix as well, just like the car. The last one I'm going to do is called The Tingler. <laughs> and no, this is not something by Chuck Tingle. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, believe it or not, you can go see some old horror movies on YouTube. Uh, it's it, yeah, maybe if you look for something specific. Of course, when you find one, they'll put suggestions in there, and you can look at more. Uh, this is a 1959 horror suspense movie starring Vincent Price, the king of horror. More importantly, directed by one William Castle. Now, when I saw this, it started off with William Castle coming out from behind a stage curtain to talk about how scary it is and how if you get scared, you need to scream. <laughs> the oh, whole that's, premise that's just wonderful the whole premise of this movie is that Vincent Price plays this M.E. who believes that there is some parasite within all of us and we get super scared squeezes our spine and uh, only you only get it up you know you only survive if you scream now that's quite interesting <laughs> now of course this is 1950s and the, the the story itself is a little bit different. Some certain lines didn't pan out. One thing that came up was uh, Price's relationship with his wife on the, in the movie. That's actually happened in a few Price movies, by the way, in terms of unfaithful wife and the husband wants to get revenge on her as well. And not to mention that, as I said, the lines don't go certain ways. But interesting is Castle used certain gimmicks in order to really get the audience involved. Now, of course, Castle directed Price and the original House on Haunted Hill, which also had a flying skeleton going through movie theaters. I'm assuming the release was limited in certain movie theaters, because you just can't get to every one of them in the United States. But in this case of The Tingler, they actually had the Percepto Buzzer implanted <laughs> in the seat. This is that this was mentioned in Dance Macabre by Stephen King. Yeah. Yes, a little buzzer in the seats that would send a tingle up your spine. Now, Chuck and Kevin know this, and if you don't know this, well, I'm just going to have to tell you my problems. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had surgery on my neck. I had to have some of the vertebrae fixed up on it. And if you actually, I, you know, maybe I'll give it to Kevin later. He can put it up here as well. The x-rays, it shows this looks like a metal caterpillar screwed into my neck and i swear to god when they showed us the tingler monster that's what it looked like <laughs> to be honest nice uh but not to mention besides the percepto <laughs> buzzer castle hired fake screamers and fainters <laughs> and fake nurses to help those fainters as well nice. now that might seem like a cheesy thing not to mention the movie itself they had a breaking the fourth wall kind of thing where the monster escaped in this movie theater nearby. So Price and some other guy were looking for it. And then the movie theater blacked out. And you hear Price go, Ladies and gentlemen, the tingler is loose in the movie theater. It screams so it doesn't touch you. And I maybe that worked for back then. I like that. <laughs> I mean, you know what? I like that whole... Yeah, a the, little extra a little that they're meta, adding A little meta there. Us. There yeah. you go. And I, uh, it sounds super wheel, uh, weird. But you know what? Not everyone has access to all the movie streaming, so go. you can go on YouTube, look up some old horror movies. Chuck? Yep. All right. I'll do two movies. Uh, first one I'll do is uh, Session 9, which Kevin finally watched. I've been trying to get him to watch it for a while. Uh, Tom, book. I know you've seen yep. it. Uh, excellent movie. One, one reason this is special to me is because this is one of the very few horror movies that I've actually seen before Kevin. <laughs> and uh, I, I watched it in college. It was a 2001 release, I believe, yep. when it came out. Uh, it stars a David Caruso, Sans sunglasses, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, but it's a after wonder- his NYPD Blue problem. Yep. Yeah, it's a wonderful indie horror film, uh, supernatural horror film. The uh, people in the movie are a team of asbestos removal removal crew, um, yep. and are got brought into a uh, an asylum psychiatric ward to remove the asbestos from the old building, which that building reminds me heavily of the one here in Binghamton. Um, and the Integrated uh, Asylum, which really is not a horror, it's not a lunatic asylum, it's for yeah. drunks to dry well, out, which I don't both. know what they we both. need they that for. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, it starts, the, one of the characters finds, 
some recordings, audio recordings from there, and starts listening to them at when they're supposed to be doing the asbestos removal. Starts to tie into the main character hearing voices and the question of uh, the haunting that's going on there. Keeps you guessing quite a bit. Um, it's genuinely creepy. It's it's a very it's a it's a type of indie horror film that tries to be bigger than its budget. I would say, um, you know, a smaller budget in terms of what they have for special effects and things like that, but. They go for a more traditional storyline, yeah. um, so with some good acting, and it, it acts like a bigger movie than it is. This is one you'll frequently see mentioned on, you know, indie horror best indie horror films. Uh, I've seen Session Nine appear on that list multiple times. Um, highly, highly recommended. It's actually one of, I would say one of my favorite horror movies, especially indie horror movies. That I've it, seen. It's weird, Chuck. I don't want to jump in on here, but it's like one of those movies where the first time you see it. You're not too fond of it. Second mm-hmm. time you're seeing it, you're thinking, "Oh wow, this is a really a good movie." Yep. There's got to be a phrase for that. We'll we'll figure that out. It is. It's a good film. And the nice thing about that is, I think you're really still left wondering at the end of the film if there is a haunting or if it was psychological. Yeah, main, yep. main character kind of. Losing, it gets in your head. It's very supernatural. It's psychological. Um, it's just really well written. It is something worth multiple reviewings. I actually bought it recently on DVD, so I can watch it again. Um, it's uh, I, I very much enjoy it, so I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, the other movie I'll talk about, I, I don't know if I can call it a recommendation, but it's uh, Gwen. I watched it on Shutter. It's on there now. Um, okay. I would wasn't I, I came in with the wrong expectations, so I will say that if you ha- come in with the right expectations and it sounds interesting to you, it's not bad. Um, it's uh, very well acted. The the mother and daughter that are the main characters of it are fantastic. So the acting is top notch. Um, it's an indie horror film. It feels though it's I don't know the history of the, the writer or director, but it feels like it's somebody who is more into artsy films and then want to take a swing at, at horror and didn't understand the nuance very well. Um, I talked during a previous session about, you know, kind of the, we talked about tropes and mm-hmm. uh, the trope of the anti-Christian sentiment. And I see it coming up in here. Uh, it really, it wasn't even earned. It was just, it was just there. It's like, oh, I'm just going to reject, you know, the people in, in their culture and, and the people, you know, in the, the church that they go to. It, it just it just felt like they were playing into the tropes for that one. So that we talked about tropes being, it's not necessarily a bad thing. This is one where it's a bad example where the directors seem to do it because that's what you do in a horror movie. Mm. Um, And it felt more like a period drama that just was a little bit more edgy in terms of the content, like the the animals dying, um, the people trying to force them out of their home. Um, The core of the story is it's a a mother and two daughters in Wales, and I, I don't remember if they gave the year or not, but it's an older film. It's set to be... During the historical event, a uh, very you know Puritan era, um, and they're trying to survive while the father is away at war, and meanwhile the townspeople want their their farm because their the mine is expanding and they want to use it for money, and that's that's it's a it's a greed thing. Uh, and their animals start dying, and the the town is messing with them, trying to force them out. It felt more like a period drama. I, I went into it on Shutter. It they they play it up as more of a supernatural horror. It's not. Uh, so I was a bit disappointed from that respect. That said, it, 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 again, some of it felt a little tropey, like they were trying to be a horror movie at certain scenes, and they're just not that good. There's also like the dream sequence that's like this feels tropey. So if you're just going with the right mindset, it's not bad. If you're more, if you like historical movies, you like that kind of historical drama. It's more like a Victorian. Uh, lower class focus of people just struggling out on the out in the rural areas. It's not bad, and I would say the acting is excellent. Oh, I think I actually started Gwen and mm-hmm. didn't get very far. Yeah, it's a it's a bit slow. I I, I was watching it while working on some other stuff. I was just kind of observing it and uh, listening in. So it's not bad if you're the right audience for it. Go in with it not thinking like this is going to be a supernatural horror film, but this is more of a a, a period drama. Okay. All right, so here are my recommendations. I have uh, a couple from Shudder, and I have one from Netflix. The first one from Shudder I just watched is VFW. Bunch of veterans from foreign wars in a post-apocalyptic future where everyone's on drugs. you got a brand new drug on the market that turns everyone into crazed, uh, ravaging zombies so they can get their fix. Girl steals the drugs because the drug lord kills her. Sister, she runs from them, 
gets chased into the VFW and drug lords realize that guys that were in Vietnam and Guam in World War II in Korea uh, are not exactly a bunch of old pushovers. Mm -hmm. That pretty much sums up the movie. Um, it's it's one of those movies, though, that it, um, it's a splatter fest. Uh, there's some pretty inventive kills. My favorite kill was probably uh, when the main character, played by Sean Lang, uh, takes a veteran's uh, flag. Stephen and Lang. Was that? Stephen Lang. Maybe it's Stephen Lang. I can't it remember. It is Stephen Lang. Um, but... <laughs> Um, takes a veteran's flag and literally jams it down somebody's throat. I mean, you gotta love that. But I mean, it's one of those movies that's bloody. It's definitely a uh, graphic, but it's actually really. I think it's really, really well done. It's like a movie that's an homage to grindhouse movies. That it becomes better than grindhouse movies. And come on, for your veteran, your cast of veterans, you've got William Sadler, Stephen Lang, Lang. Um, Martin Cove. Uh, Fred Williamson, even George Went, you know, nice. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it's a great, it's a great movie. I really, really enjoyed I like, it. I, like, I haven't seen it, but I love the and premise. It was a lot of fun. I love the premise. Add on to that, I mean, with Martin Cove making a little, rem uh, you know, coming back with Cobra Kai. Oh, yeah. I, I feel bad for him because he's always had the 1980s I'm the evil guy thing, so yeah. I'm glad that... Yeah, he was pretty good in this. Yeah, yeah, I'm he, sure he's a he, nice yeah. guy. Um, the next one is Z, also on Shutter, about a boy who has a uh, imaginary friend who turns out to be not so imaginary. Um, it was a good flick. I think what was um, unexpected about this flick is the angle that it turns out that uh, Z is not a random demon. Uh, that Z is a generational thing that had been the mother's imaginary playmate and now it's trying to get back at the You mom. said demon and your light flickered I over know, there. Right, so, right, right. Yeah, We've I, all seen Supernatural. Dude, right? You we don't have to drive home after this. Yeah. I'm a little nervous. So now. Z on Shudder. Um, lovely Molly also on Shudder uh, done by one of the uh, the uh, masters behind uh, Blair Witch Project Eduardo Sanchez. Oh. It's a good flick. It's about this uh, newlywed um, newlyweds who move back into their family home and the one girl is a recovering addict uh, or she's recovered addict, things like that. And she starts right from the get-go. Uh, uh, strange things are happening in the house. Um, she becomes very much uh, plagued by some presence. It is strongly hinted that the presence uh, might be her father uh, and that her father had sexually abused her. Um, and it, because that's what she really starts presenting as. Um, and it's a good flick, very unsettling, especially with the idea that after it's all said and done, the presence is just going to move on to uh, to uh, now haunt her sister at the very end of the movie. So it's definitely, definitely a good flick on Shutter, Lovely Molly. Not really a found footage flick. Part of it is done with people videotaping, but it's not really a found footage flip, uh, flick, but it's got that camera style it's trying to look more, it's trying to look grittier and not like cinematic. Um, the last one was just a plain fun movie on Shutter. The last one on Shutter, Blood Vessel. Okay, now when you're talking about tropes, this was tropey, done well. Um, so a group of allied uh, troops, one guy's an Australian, one guy's a Brit, one guy's American, the girl's American, one World guy's. World War II. World War II. Uh, one's a Russian soldier, their ship is sunk. They're on a lifeboat, this gigantic... Now, you gave me the term earlier. What is it? Kriegsmarine. A big German warship goes floating <laughs> by. Yeah, big German warship you goes... You didn't even try yeah. to say No, it. no. Why would I? I've got Tom here to say <laughs> it for me. Go. Goes floating by. They're able to get on it, and they find out very soon that the whole thing is abandoned. Uh, and then things take a turn when they find um, sealed up in this room... Um, these two ancient-looking stone coffins, you know, Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, Nazis are always trying to get, not at Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones, uh, Last Raiders. Crusade, Raiders, they're always, Nazis are always trying to get occult stuff. Don't yeah. remember, remember kids, Nazis are bad. That's right. Punch they are the bad. Nazis. Punch them. Um, and of course, uh, there are these ancient beings that suck blood, and you know, I guess I shouldn't really, you know, and they end up letting them loose. 
Um, it's really done, well done. The creature effects are really well done. They also did a really good job at making the vampires, what Guahan said, they're vampires. They make a really good job of making the vampires look like an ancient, an ancient superior race that actually has their own code of ethics and it's a whole vampire family so the idea that a vampire husband and a vampire wife have this eternal bond it, it was really well done and it was a lot of fun so i almost watched that instead of gwen blood vessel on on shutter the last one is his house on netflix this is a really good film about um i'm gonna get it totally wrong so i'm not gonna even give the uh, name but it's about this there's, there's a black couple um, from South Africa, I believe, that are escaping. Yeah, I don't want to say Rwanda or something like that, but I don't remember. Uh, escaping the country? Or, uh, escaping they're escaping. The, they're escaping their wartime. Those one of those uh, countries that's always gripped by civil war and violence. Congo. So, uh, Congo or Rwanda? No, it was more Rwanda. Rwanda like, was in '94. Yeah, yeah. So they become. Uh, they emigrate into. Um, you know, they're given asylum in Britain, um, and they get this uh, house. Uh, this low rent, you know, uh, but you know, so they're like, hey, here's his house, be thankful. Very soon we realize that something has followed him there, this, uh, this spirit that's haunting them. You know, it slowly is starting to drive the husband mad. Um, it's a great film for the twists, which I'm not going to mention. Also a great film because in the end, so um, when you're talking about blacks and horror, um, it's a loaded question. Uh, there's also a great, on a side note, there's a great documentary on Shutter called Black Noir, a horror noir, about the history of blacks in horror cinema. And this is one of those films that, that really does a positive thing in that our black characters don't become fodder for the monster and then die. You know, uh, what you see ultimately is their strength as a husband and a wife willing to sacrifice for each other. So it's really, really great film on Netflix. Okay. So, those are our reviews, the recommendations. You know what? God forbid if quarantine happens, get get on the computer, get on yep. TV, enjoy it. And I will mention, actually, I think I saw Session 9 is on Netflix It right is now. on Netflix. That's where I saw it with Session 9 was yep. on Netflix. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.